My name is Jennifer Thomas Haudeschel. I'm an artist and a children's picture book illustrator. Right now, I'd like to show you some of the paintings I have done in a show called Faces of Human Trafficking. That's showing at the Carrollwood Cultural Center in Tampa Bay. Just a, a travel with me along with them. I'm starting you out with a positive one. This is Survivor. And you can tell by the look in her eyes that she is a survivor, that she will be okay, that she is finding her path again, that she is determined. By the look in her eyes, she is probably one of the many survivors that have spoken and whose stories I've listened to. She has great courage and I have great admiration for everyone that she symbolizes. Next is a youngster that's traumatized. The title is Traumatized. This girl has suffered enough that she's PTSD. She's probably also been drugged because usually no one's going to cooperate unless they're afraid of being beaten or um, they, they think they love the man who is trafficking them, or the man tells them he loves them. And maybe nobody's ever loved them before. Or maybe they've never had a boyfriend before, and this is their first boyfriend, and he tells them all kinds of wonderful things, that they're a princess, they're so beautiful, and he can't live without them. And then the boyfriend changes, and she's gang raped, and then she's beaten down until she's ready to make money for him, because she has no choice. And still sometimes there's trauma bonding where she might believe that he really does care. So, so I was trying to show the trauma in her eyes and a strange environment foreign to her. This one, <clears throat> this one is the root of it all. This one I call demand. If it weren't for the men, and sometimes women, demanding sex with underage victims and with legal age victims, if it weren't for them, there would be no multi-billion dollar global industry happening. It's their demand in our highly sexualized society uh, that makes the whole business churn. And because of the influence of pornography in our society and the explosion of it onto the internet, where even 60% of women have logged on, let alone men, we have a demand, and a demand for more and more violent sexual experiences so that it's invading things that John wouldn't do at home with his wife, he will do on these kids and the Johns are not being punished adequately. They are not, the legal justice needs to slap huge jail sentences on them to stop it. And most of them, interestingly enough, 60 to 70% say if they were, a letter was going to their house or their, they were gonna get featured in the newspaper, they wouldn't do it, they wouldn't do it. And there's more and more demand by them for younger and younger girls in the ads on various pages like Backpage used to be on various sites. Anything that has young is more, gets more hits. Um, anything that has innocent gets more hits. So this man demand, he could be anybody. He could be, he could be a father with kids at home, going out to get the groceries and stopping off to abuse a child or an adult young woman. He could be a predator like we see on television. He could be um, your uncle. He could be your grandfather. He could be your father because many people are trafficked by their own parents. Um, there's no way to put a face on him. In another painting, I have a few faces I put on him but there's no way to recognize him because he's everywhere and um, she is victimized by him. 
So we need strong laws and jail sentences by judges for Johns who drive the demand of this huge industry, who make everything happen. The next painting, See Beneath the Surface, meaning look closely at her. Don't take her at face value. Don't assume things about her because of her hair or the way she looks. Notice an offset eye that probably has bones around it that have been broken. Um, see a person for who she is, and when she's a survivor, see the beauty of her and the courage of her soul. This one was the first one I ever did. I was working with a wonderful group called Hope, <laughs> Helpers of People Enslaved, and we had a, this one for it was filling a space on a wall at a banquet auction. We were raising money for shelter beds, shelter beds, shelters and beds, and care for survivors are so desperately needed. So many more young people needing care for so many things. PTSD, malnutrition, drug addiction from being forced to use drugs, hooked on drugs by traffickers, education gaps, no dental care, uh, surgeries to repair extreme damage, um, delayed emotional development because your development stops pretty much when you're first terribly abused. And so many, maybe a child, child care. Um, there's so many things that have, have to be involved with professionals on restoration. But hope is what we all are working for, and hope is always there. So she was my first painting, quickly done for the banquet that night. And little did I know there would be 23 more of them soon, in the years following. And we've all got to have hope and determination. Uh, this one is the last one I've done just recently. Um, I was inspired by a painter that I like very much named George Tucker, who was a political activist in his paintings. Government Bureau was one of his most famous paintings. But he did a sleeper series. Um, and of course, the face and the image and the reason is all my own. Uh, but I appreciated his leg up on thinking of a different way to compose it. I, I can only begin to imagine how you must feel sleeping by a monster who looks like an ordinary man and wishing so that while you lie awake in the night that and can hardly breathe, this one is called Scared to Breathe, wishing that you could slip out from under the covers and escape. But you can't. Any movement will waken the monster. And any, uh, and what, where are you? Where are you and you have nothing on? How are you going to escape and how are you going to help? But how can you not wish to pull the covers over your head and disappear? so that you never have to suffer through this again, not one more night. This one's called Living a Nightmare, <clears throat> which, which everyone is who's being trafficked, living a nightmare with trauma that's so severe that it stops your emotional development and changes your life. Um, I've got a gang insignia, or kind of my version of a gang insignia. I'm not an expert on gang insignias, but of course, gangs also use, uh, also traffic uh, people to make funds, to build funds. Y y drugs, you sell the drugs and you've gotta go get more drugs to sell. But a human being can be used and reused and used and reused long as she lives, which is usually like five to seven years if she is not rescued and she's constantly abused, uh, she can't live beyond five to seven years usually. So um, I wanted 
one painting that showed her distress and the gang insignia representing being used by that gang. And sometimes it's street youngsters we've got in Florida alone, 30,000 to 40,000 kids, homeless, runaways, throwaways on our streets at any given night. So who's going to get to them? A third of them in, in 48 hours has been approached by traffickers and pulled into the sex trafficking business. Um, and more often to follow. Some just plain survival sex. Where are they going to sleep? Where are they going to eat? How are they going to manage? So some of them will join a gang for some type of safety. And then the gang becomes the family that threw them out. That, I mean, that didn't throw them out. Becomes their family to take the place of where they weren't wanted. And so when the gang asks them to do uh, business for them, um, they're trapped, number one, they're in the gang, but they also want to help in gratitude because they had nowhere and no one. Now this one I often revert to, to art history, to artists I have loved my whole life. And this is one, of, one artist who helped me was uh, Eugène Delacroix, a French, a French painter that caught my fancy when I was just a college kid. Um, he did a small painting. He was doing a huge canvas of all kinds of turmoil and war. And he did a small painted sketch um, called Orphan Girl. And so I drew, he painted my version of this orphan girl from 1824. 1824, artists, they're always alive in your heart. You know, they're always helping you throughout the centuries. And, and, and giving you insight. And it's a responsibility of artists to show the way the world is these days and let people know. So um, this was my version of his orphan girl and I added the barcode because so many of the kids have, are tattooed by their um, pimp and their trafficker, like property, which is what they're saying, their property, you know. They're their property, they're for sale. Um, and some of them even have actually have barcodes on them. One thing that uh, people can do if they want to help is pay for a tattoo to be removed uh, or concealed. So a kid doesn't have to bear, or a young woman doesn't, or a boy doesn't have to bear a tattoo their whole life to remind them as if they needed reminding. The next painting um, I did to nod my head to the way most most underage minors are being um, recruited into trafficking routine right now. The boy, and there are about 30% boys being trafficked and 70% girls. The boy thinks he's just playing a video game with his buddy. He met his buddy on the internet and they kind of became friends and they found out that they both played the same sport at school, and they, they both loved soccer. And they got to talking while their mom and dad had to work during the COVID pandemic. And the more they talked, the more they became friends. But it wasn't really his little buddy here. It was the trafficker who had put up the profile of the little buddy. And it's the trafficker who's going to eventually say, hey, aren't you sick of homework and being sick? stuck in the house, meet me at such and such park, or meet me at the arcade. Let's do some gaming together if the arcade's open. Meet me anywhere, it doesn't matter where he says to meet him. And um, often a kid will meet him within 24 hours of having built up a friendship, sometimes longer. A groomer doesn't mind, a trafficker can take six months to groom somebody. If they're gonna make 400,000 a year off this kid, heck, it's worth the time to invest in the kid. And if it's a girl and she's on her phone and she, you, you tell her, oh yeah, what school do you go to? Oh, he finds out the school. Do you play sports at that school? I play sports at such and such school. You know, who do you know? Oh yeah, I know them too. You're so beautiful. You're just a princess. I'd love to have a picture of you. Would you send me a picture? 
Maybe not for a while, she might not, but she's probably never had a boyfriend before. And here's this guy and he's a kid like her and he plays at this, for the school next, you know, down the block from her school. And she gets to know him more and more and he wants a picture, so she might send him a picture and then he wants a picture with, without any clothes on the top of her. And, and once she, he has the picture, well, he's gonna tell her mom and dad that she posed for that picture. Well, he's gonna show it to her, her school. He's gonna send it to her teachers, unless she sends him more pictures, more pictures. And, and her parents won't even want her anymore when they find out that she posed for those pictures, he says. They won't even love her. They'll be so ashamed of her. And so the child is trapped and upset and parents need to say to their kids, first they need to never let the phones be in the bedrooms at night and never ever in a bathroom and no computers in the bedrooms at all. But they need to say to their kids, we love you so much. Here's what is happening to lots of kids. If anything ever happens, we love you. You can trust us. Tell us, tell us right away. Nobody can blackmail you, you know, et cetera, and speaking to them. Um, so that the kids are aware. What happens if one of the kids gets a photo of, of a girl at school and he passes it on to other kids? Well, it's a felony. It's a felony. He'll have a felony arrest on him. So kids need to know that too. Don't pass on things. And for the, the girl, then if she's saved from this whole situation, she still has to deal with her photos all over the internet forever. One I call Betrayed. This was one of the early ones I did also. Betrayed could fit on almost any, any painting. You can tell by her eyes, she trusted the people she was talking to. She is from an affluent home. It doesn't matter your demographics. Every demographic is involved, yes. Youngsters in foster care or runaways are a much higher profile target. But everyone's a target in this world when the monster machine needs feeding, more we need to be recruited. So she's hurt. She, she doesn't understand. Her lips trembling. She believed the one who told her the lies. Betrayed. This one tore me up when I was painting it. A lot of them tear me up when I'm painting them. I tried to focus on that I was composing it differently than the others. I tried to keep the threats abstract. John's. I tried to keep reminding everybody this was a child under 18. Um, but I couldn't help but be affected by her. And then when it came time to title her, I knew what the title had to be. It had to be $400 an hour. And that really upset me too. But that's what, 400 to $600 an hour, that's what a trafficker can get for a child. So you see the thread. She's a child, she's a young woman. I. I don't know that, I don't know that trafficked young people would shed a tear. I think their veneer has to be so hard um, and they have to kind of detach their minds a bit. But I had to shed a tear anyway. Now she isn't a street child being trafficked. She's being trafficked at a higher end level, probably for corporations. Uh, sport, uh, events that come into town that are exclusive fancy events. I titled her Waiting because she's just waiting for the next John that's going to be sent in. The children <clears throat> helped me tell my story <laughs> in, the, in the beginning and now. You know what the show's about because the children are helping me. And you could interpret them as being children we want to protect by awareness so that this stops 
sadly you could interpret them as children who have been trafficked also, but I think of them as all of our children and grandchildren and teens and young women and adults and boys that we're trying to protect. Terror in the night. Terror in the night. I told Michelle, the curator, I formerly had this uh, as a horizontal painting, but it was too painful for people. <laughs> the painting was too painful, but the knowledge is what is painful. The knowledge is what needs to activate us as to what is happening. But I feel like in Terror in the Night that we can feel her pain, even though she's black and white paint on a canvas. Uh, this one is called You Can Help, <laughs> a tough painting with a good name. This time I wanted simply to say, like anybody, <laughs> he can look like a grandfather, but I made him look more evil than your grandfather. He can look like this guy. She is a trafficker, Maxwell, we all know that. Uh, one ca uh, deputy in um, our area, our county, had said, or, or, or an adjoining county, might have been Polk, said 40% of the traffickers he has experienced are women. You don't think about women trafficking other girls and women and boys, but they do. Often a mother, one of the most terrible trafficking stories I've heard in my time was in our newspapers about a young girl whose mother sold her. Um, so, and there's this guy, and there's the guy with the sunglasses looking cool. He's probably a corporate executive. Um, and then there are the girls, some of them. I put the flower because the girls are so delicate and sensitive, and I put a figure of death as a woman because sometimes death welcomes a girl when she can't take it anymore she can cuddle up in the arms of death and it's over. And we, and we don't want that ending for any of them. This was awkward to me, but I wanted to represent a, a survivor who told me, I wished I didn't have a body at all. I wished I didn't have a body. So, and I tried to represent various, various young women. Um, this one, this one is a symbolic piece. There are, are still abducted, there are still abductions happening. You hear them on the news, you get them on your Amber Alerts. There are still abductions happening. Um, and I put a symbolic abductor on the side. Um, and I said, wouldn't it be nice if all of the, all of the traffickers looked like him? Then we could recognize them immediately throw him in jail, get rid of the keys, and we'd be, have the situation solved. But he's just a symbol, and abductions take place less than the internet. The internet is where you're going to get 70 or 80 percent of your recruited, uh, kids recruited. But still we have the child who someone tried to get in the car on the way to school, the child who someone got in the car on the way to school. So. She took her place with the paintings also. This one is titled Desolation. I wanted to include her because of her beautiful mane of hair and because of her sensitive face and her fear reflected in it and also her tiny body. Malnutrition is a problem with young women who've been trafficked. Who cares to feed them well? or never get them a medical appointment if they're sick, and they're often got problems from HIV, AIDS, and all kinds of other STIs that the business has given them. Um, so if she, if she needs enough food to just keep working, and the quality of the food doesn't matter either, and her health doesn't matter either, nothing matters but the green paper that they get from selling her 
but she matters to us. This is the first boy that I included when I realized that it was very important to include boys too. I named him Stun because he thought someone was his friend. He thought someone was his buddy. Maybe he met him at a community center and there was a great volunteer working there that um, showed a special interest in him because his, his, he, his dad left the family at some point and he didn't really have anybody to look up to. Um, maybe he, he was his uncle he trusted and did lots of things with. Whoever he was or an older friend who brought him to the trafficker, whoever he was, the child trusted him, the teen trusted him. And now something has happened and he's been forced to do something and he's all confused and mixed up about it. Because with a boy, he doesn't know. He feels guilty. He doesn't know that he was only a victim. He feels like it's partly his fault. He doesn't know what to say to mom and dad. He doesn't know how to deal with what has happened to his body. He doesn't know how to deal with what has happened to his heart because he trusted somebody. And he's done, and it's just the beginning of a horrendous life. This painting I call Behind a Facade. She's been trafficked for some years, but still the presence of the man behind her, who's her trafficker, sends terror through her bones. And she's looking out through you. It's like we don't see her. We just see a couple. We just see a couple. And she looks upset about something, so we think, oh, maybe they had a fight. Or, you know, they had an argument or something. Because that's what we see. But behind the facade, she's desperately wishing for help. Get out your cell phone. Call the human trafficking hotline. Let them know about her. Try to get her help. If he's yanking her arm, that gives you more ammunition. Call 911 instead. The faster the better. Help is by digital, not by you barging in and trying to rescue her. She has to be helped by people who know how to do it. This painting, where am I? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because most victims of trafficking, some are kept in their home and their parents traffic them and sell them one youngster being sold for even as little as half a Xanax multiple times a night to feed a drug habit by a parent. But most are trafficked on a circuit. Um, um, the traffickers don't want them to know what city they're in necessarily, though they may end up knowing, or where, where they are in that city or know anyone in the city. Uh, they teach them not to trust uh, church people, not to trust um, social workers, not to trust police officers, not to trust anybody but the trafficker. So where is she? She's new. Where is she? She's been removed from her surroundings. A circuit in Florida goes Miami, Orlando, Tampa, Tampa, Miami, Orlando, back and forth around in the circle so the girl never knows exactly where she is. Sometimes they've been removed in the beginning uh, when they've first been trafficked to a site like a boat or a site that is um, a house in Winter Park that has, I mean, in a house in Hyde Park that was sold and it was discovered that it has a hidden staircase and hidden rooms where the organized crime don conducted some of his human trafficking business. So she doesn't know where she is. She doesn't know what's going to happen. She doesn't know. This little one I call deceived. Sweet and innocent looking. Sweet and innocent, she was. Um, but she also was deceived by someone who seemed to care for her. Or in the storyline, she could be been one of the ones who was deceived by someone who supposedly cared for her. In reality, it was my tribute to a, a youngster 
who wanted to go on a youth trip with her church, but she didn't have the money to go on the youth trip. And so she was talking to her friend, how could she get the money to get to go with everybody else? And they said, well, there's a, there's a, a guy downtown, some guys downtown, and they say they have jobs for kids. And so she, she went to see them. And the next morning, she was dead in a hospital with a drug overdose because she wouldn't go with them on her own. So she was drugged and she was overdosed accidentally. And so that's how the, the child that this is a tribute to, it doesn't look like her. I never saw the child, but I knew her story from a church not far from where I live. So if you've got kids in a youth group, figure out a way to help everybody get to go on the trip, no matter what, you know, because you never know what could happen. But in general, deceived could work for any young girl or boy, deceived. Someone cares about them or someone's their friend. This funky little one, she's titled Courage. And she has it from stem to stern. Stem to stern, look at those flashing eyes. She has courage. Usually you're, you're supposed to keep your eyes downcast if you're being trafficked. You never look up and you for never look up at another trafficker who's talking to your trafficker because that means uh, they can take you. So you're never gonna look anybody in the eyes or make contact. But she is looking somebody in the eyes and you can tell she resents the heck out of them. She will become a survivor, I would say. Either that or, or she'll lose her life. But she has courage. A young woman so desperately wanting a place to hide as if she could put her hands over her face and she would disappear. And she would never have to deal with this again. No place to hide. No place at all. You would think the focal point in this painting would be the boy, and it is to some degree. But the real focal point is this man up here with the white flashboard. A white flashboard means pornography. So I entitled him Whiteboard Run. But after hearing stories of survivors of, of, and stories of those who rescue kids, of men trailing little girls in bathrobes up the rickety stairs to a room and they're carrying a white flashboard. And this actually, this specific occurrence occurred at the Super Bowl that was in Miami. And so the guys that were watching were wired and their wires, they contacted the FBI immediately. So up the stairs to your friend, that nice guy that's been so sweet to you, but actually is filming pornography, child pornography, which Judy Woodruff said there were 43 million videos of children being sexually tortured um, in 2018 online. So whiteboard run, go kid, <laughs> don't let him be your friend. After you get through this exhibit and you make it and you're armed with your how can you help information and your facts about human trafficking information and your brochure from the free network, you come to this wonderful piece on the wall and it's called Knots. And I'm going to read this to you because you need some relief when you get to this point, <laughs> very definitely. So it says, when we did this activity, I began by placing a bunch of rope, string, and cord. I is Michelle Stone, the curator at the Carrollwood Cultural Center. I began by placing a bunch of rope, string, and cord in a variety of colors except for purple in the center of the table. I asked the students to pick one and take as much as they felt they needed. I began the exercise describing how sometimes when a person is in a domestic violence or abusive environment, or human trafficking environment, that they feel like they need to, that they have knots in their stomach or their hands are tied or other similar expressions. 
I told them that I was going to say a series of statements, and for every time they felt what I asked, they had to tie a knot. So tie a knot for how often you felt as though your hands were tied. Tie a knot for how often you felt your stomach was in knots. Tie a knot for how often you felt fit to be tied. Tie a knot for how often you felt tied up. Tie a knot for how often you felt tied down. Then I put a purple cord in the middle of the table and explained to them that the purple is the color of domestic violence abuse awareness month. I asked them to take as much as they wanted and then I explained to them that the purple cord represented all of the people, organizations, or moments in their lives when someone helped them, someone gave them a loving ear to listen, provided information, food, shelter, or supplies to help them along the way. I asked them to knot the purple cord for every time this happened in their lives. They had the option of how to incorporate it into their first set of knots. The tapestry has been tied to a purple tube to represent how the student's higher power has been there all along, all through their lives, guiding them and directing them to a better place. We invite you now, as you complete the human trafficking exhibit, to add to this beautiful tapestry for anyone you've ever known who has had a struggle in his or her life or has had some help. Please take a cord or string or rope it's totally up to you and tie the knots. It doesn't matter how you tie them or what direction the rope goes. The important thing is that you participate and show your support for Domestic Violence Awareness Month and for Human Trafficking Awareness. So this is a brilliant idea that Michelle had and a helpful idea for the students she was working with and for all of us. And I want my knot on there too. And it should probably be purple, but I want it to be pink in honor of all the girls. And I better put the blue one up there too. <laughs> I can find one. Yep, I can in honor of all the boys. And I'd like to put one up there for all of us who will be helpers. And I hope after you come to the show, you'll be an activist and a helper too. You'll be an abolitionist in modern day slavery. Thank you.